Um, you can actually see this on the floor, uh, the GDC floor right now. You know, one of our people will take you through it. Uh, we built this, so what was really important here was we built this with the artists in mind. So this was an artist-driven, artist-built tool. That's why it looks like Maya, um, almost, almost exactly. Uh, we make all, made sure all the navigation was friendly to the artists. You know, we had the options for Maya and Max navigation, depending on how, you know, there's always that bitter war. Um, <laughs> but uh, we did everything we can to have the, the rendering in here as, as close to realistic as, we, as, as possible. Um, a, couple, a couple things I want to show you guys uh, is the amount, the, the amount of parameters that are available. You know, like I said, when we worked with CD Projekt, the most important thing was talking to them about getting parameters that were like runtime tunable, uh, and that gave them the, the, the ability to preserve the styles they were looking for. Um, uh, on the right here is where we have like the general attributes. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can play with here. We actually have wind that you can preview uh, in the game. As we were saying, you know, you can make it fairly chaotic. Uh, all this stuff is stuff that you can you can tune in here uh, real time. We have the ability to, uh, as he was talking earlier, to grow and shrink the hair in real time, um, which is kind of nice for, for when you're doing quick iteration cycles. You can actually sit here and uh, you know tweak this. Uh, there's Approximately, if you see here, this, these little buttons, uh, these are texture controls. Uh, right now we have approximately 14 uh, runtime texture controls that you can use. Uh, some of these examples are stiffness, for instance. If you want to have parts of the body be more stiff in the air uh, or loose, you can just paint that in the UV space and it is uh, per pixel. So this isn't something that's going to be like a, a perfect vertex thing. You can actually do like per pixel uh, density as seen here, um, which was really important. For instance, if you have a character's brow, right, you're not going to have uh, the vertices per perfectly line up along the hair. So it was really important that all of our density attributes are per pixel. Uh, there was a one more thing that was important to show you guys uh, based on uh, you know what we had just said. Let me bring my length scale all the way back up and tune down the hair, the wind here, make it a little less crazy. Uh, was the ability to affect things like uh, like waviness uh, and clumping. So uh, on this character, I'll go ahead and I'll put in some values here where we can we can actually play with the waviness uh, in real time. Um, you can scale scale how uh, noisy it is. You can actually take the frequency and make it into a really uh, furry ball. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe this is how he gets like right out of the shower and nail on a really hardcore uh, air dryer. Uh, we actually allow you to, to resample CVs um, in real time. As you can see here, these are the, the guide curves that we had out of uh, Max and, and Maya. Um, we can allow you uh, along these control points. Like right now, this only has four control points. Um, let me remove the hair so you can actually see that. Four control points per, uh, per guide. We actually will allow, allow you to, to resample these on the fly, um, which will actually make it Make it significantly higher quality um, in the actual hair. For example, that again. And finally, uh, probably one of the, the more important, I guess it's waviness under control. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, probably one of the more important things uh, that we talked about was this, this idea of continuous LMD. Uh, so it was really important to us that as, as you scaled, or you zoomed out, and you zoomed in, that the user didn't actually notice that the LED is changing. Um, and another, of course, so we have two different things. We actually have a continuous LED that goes from a center point out, and it'll reduce the density of the hairs, but increase things like uh, strand width. So it'll actually kind of fill in where it was. But we took that a step further, and we also have a continuous LED, or a detail LED, so that as we zoom in on a character such as this, it uh, actually just keeps getting furrier and furrier. Um, I don't know how well it's showing up on the projector, but uh, so what we're allowed to do is do something roughly like if this, this character has, uh, say, half, it had about a half a million hairs at a, at a high density value when you're looking at it. And what we can do is, is we can go in and we can just keep pumping that up. Um, you know, right here, we, we could be looking at 40K hairs in this small area. And the performance is going to be good because not all the other hairs are rendered. Um, so this is, and as you zoom out, it's seamless, and that was a really important thing. Now, all this can be 
uh, can be visualized because we have a ton of visualizers in. This would be a full LOD, for instance. As you can see, it's actually changing as you go out to, uh, to standard LOD. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is Hair Viewer. Uh, you know, we put a lot of work into this. Uh, we've had artists from uh, not only NVIDIA, but uh, CD Projekt and other, other customers like really banking away at this, trying to figure out what it is to, to make a tool that allows you to, in real time, edit, edit uh, the asset simulation and visualization. Because uh, as anybody knows who's tried to make uh, a, a nice hair rendering in Max and Maya, the, the feedback loop is long. You know, you have to render, change parameters, render, change parameters. And here we get it all in real time for the artist, uh, which saves them a massive amount of time. Uh, one more challenge that, that we've had to, to work on with, with CD Projekt is they want to use this in, in very unique ways. Uh, you know, from, from like we showed earlier, you know, there's wolf, there's a, there's a coat on a character, um, and another thing, you know, is such, as, such as the horse where we saw the mane earlier. Um, get this to open up. There we go. Uh, that all these have unique challenges. You know, it, when you have something like uh, a horse like this, uh, suddenly you realize that when, when he's walking, uh, there's also a collision you have to take into account. So we also do support um, capsule collision for all things such as like the horse, so that when he's walking, you know, the actual uh, mane will uh, collide with the with the actual uh, with the horse in the right spot. Uh, we can also, you know, put that on uh, on the horse head as well. That way we get nice, nice interaction with the ears uh, and the body as it shakes. Um, this was, uh, this is all, all these, these capsule collisions are all are, are defined in Max and Maya through our plugin. Um, they're uh, connected capsules is, is the main thing we support right now. So you know you have a, a top radius and a bottom radius. Um, this is probably like, you know this is one of the harder assets to do right here in the horse because it not only combines the difficulties of a character's hair, but it also can but it also has uh, its own unique challenges, uh, such as these massive legs it has that like to kick around when it moves very fast. So that is, that is Hair Viewer, in a nutshell. Uh, I could probably talk to you guys all day about all these parameters, but that might bore you a little bit. Uh, but feel free to come on down to the booth and take a look. Uh, we have these assets up and running, so you can actually change the parameters, play with it, and, and see what it looks like. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it back off to Monier who will talk to you a little bit more about the cameras.